I'm with Jason of Terror Express and I'm Michelle Michaels. Excited to be here. Welcome to another episode of the Terror Express. We have an exclusive here for you today that I'm very, very excited about. Many of you will remember her as Trish from the Slumber Party Massacre. We have with us today, Michelle Michaels. And co-hosting with us is Vanessa Wright. Vanessa, welcome. And Michelle, welcome. Thank you both for joining us today. Good to be with you guys. Yes, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. Before we kind of jump into the questions, Jason, I hope you don't mind that I'm jumping in like this, but um, (laughs) it is the 40th anniversary this Mm. year Mm. of Slumber Party Massacre. And there's like a huge screening. Uh, Has it happened yet or did it just happen? um, You had posted about it, that they were, I guess, honoring the film. What a great great thing to... uh have happened to all of us yeah uh where there's a little bit of attention going to some interesting movies and i think they did choose the slumber party massacre for uh the museum of modern art it was a horror retrospective and how incredible to be part of that wow wow, incredible right (laughs) Yeah. I mean, who knew? Do you, I mean, did you have any idea that you were going to be part of something that ended up becoming (laughs) so iconic? (laughs) You know, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. It's more like um, go with the spontaneity of what you love. Another project. Yeah. You know, for, for me as an actor was like, jump, go and get in there and have fun if you can. If you have a touch of uh, experience. Yeah. It helps. It helps to take the risk a little further. Mm -hmm. No, that was what it was about was about being in the moment with any kind of producing or acting just like right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's kind of the best way to be. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you were to give advice to some young actors, you know, it would be that it's kind of like be in the moment and, and enjoy these, these opportunities as they're happening, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you know, we like to sometimes do some deep dives and this film so much to unpack. I mean, we don't need to spend the entire time talking about Mm-hmm. The film, but I think there are some really remarkable um, aspects and things that that I don't think the general audiences may have picked up on, or you know maybe even necessarily paid attention to then or maybe even now. But um, you know this is an extremely feminist film, and I think some people miss that. And you know one of one of the things I kind of wanted to touch on and and get your perspective a little bit, you know, the exploitation exists in so many horror films, um, especially from the seventies and eighties. Um, but wh- I guess what was the thought of the use of that exploitation in slumber party massacre um, specifically because I, I feel like it was more of an ironic nod, you know, it's um, probably about the two women that are the most incredible filmmakers, writer filmmakers. Rita Mae Brown had one angle that I think is so important, which is more of the activism. Rita was going to talk about diving deep. Yeah. You reminded me the name of the film is originally Don't Open the Door. Don't open that door. No, don't open the door. <laughs> the... Uh, but then it was it was worked with, you know, by Amy Holden Jones, who, as we know, came in through several lenses through that second and third wave. We know second and third wave have a lot to do with um, how women filmmakers would be going forward as powerhouses, mm-hmm. <laughs> telling a story that is kind of has a, a common powerful combination of career. That would be Amy. Mm -hmm. and activism and that would be the fabulous Rita yeah made a powerful two you know like double prong combination um that I think engined it forward and made 
this kind of feminist commentary, um, a great world of parody and, and was a, a major force of talking, helping us to see what, what is the patriarchy and what, is, yeah. what does that mean to us women? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And you were, so you were, you know, the, um, when you, my, my, my feeling about envisioning that is we, we make personal choices and decisions. Um, those are important as we belong to our only to us, to ourselves as women. And so we need to choose that story to tell over and over again with our voices, our bodies, and um, not against the patriarchy, but to help us to see the somehow we heal the patriarchy. Yeah. How do we how do we help our how do we care for ourselves? So we have to make parodies of the male tropes, and we will take that male thread away, and uh, we will face it fearlessly and courageously, uh, protectively, and and there therein lies your strong wink. Because yeah. your, your conscious wink is definitely um, going to be part of uh, the reason for the wink is you've got the strong filmmakers and those are women, which we need more of today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think, you know, I was just telling Jason before this, I wanted to watch the 2021 version because um, I hadn't seen it. <laughs> and you can tell that that film was made by people who really love and respected the original film Um, because they did take a lot of those things, a lot of those nods. And I mean, quite the wink, you know, I, I was telling Jason, I felt like, right. You know, they leaned into these stereotypes and even reversed them a little bit, not so much to say, Hey, it's time to exploit men, but really to say, this is (laughs) absurd. Look how ridiculous these stereotypes are. You know, and they leaned into it and it ended up being, you know, funny and entertaining. And it was a great nod because it was like, I see what you're doing. And yes, keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, no. one, that's one of the things I like about the franchise, too. Every installment, it has that that wink and that nod. Yeah. When you're thinking of career, second wave feminism and third wave was about career. And so Amy needed to take that um, pretty seriously. Because when you're working for, you've been given, you've been given your first job as a director. Yeah. And that's your career. That's going to be your career. So yeah. you really do care about doing it right. And um, I, I agree. And I think that we all are part of Vanessa. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think for women, especially, you know, it was never about, <laughs> having to succeed at a certain level, but honestly for women, it's being able to fail at the same rate, you know, because we don't have that. It's like, okay, we'll give you your shot, but you screw it up. You're out of here. Whereas our male counterparts get to make mistakes over and over and bomb after bomb and they still, you know, but yeah, I could, I'm, I shouldn't. uh, No, that's great. (laughs) Vanessa. Yeah. That's really true. Yeah, we have to live to it's a it's up to a much higher. Um, what am I trying to say? It, it's a higher bridge there. Yeah. yeah, we're usually in that position, and we're trying to. the uh, The career is about equality and finance, and nobody was being given that equality, and we still aren't. Right. Yeah. So, well, this actually leads into your next point, yeah, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, huge strides have been made to um, make further the advancement of women in the film industry. Um, you know, there's still a really long road ahead. Those bridges are still being traveled. What have you observed um, to be forward momentum and what still needs to happen uh, to achieve equality, especially within the horror industry? Well, did you know that we only have in the film industry, you know, 10% of women's stories being told. That's that's. But then when you look at the uh, the you know the horror genre, a lot less, hmm. a lot less. So I mean, what we what do we need to think about here? It's to be activated as women. Um, 
to do a lot more directing and producing and mm -hmm. telling the stories. And what that means is it means distribution and editing and have that together. And so that fundraising can come into place a little bit easier. So we need to, you know, have a few of the, uh, the, the basic components understood and um, get some good storytelling going. And of course, you've got to go to festivals like Renegade Festival mm -hmm. to come together collectively to learn and educate and feel inspired to write these stories about overcoming victimization. Yeah. Going into the challenges as, that we as women need to face together and stand up to the male tropes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, you bring up you bring up something very interesting that I tell people all the time is like, it, it, you know, it's not just about going here or there. Like you have to seize these opportunities. You know, we have to empower one another to, to, to create these opportunities if they're not available to us, if we're not seeing them, if we're not finding them, if they're not being given, like, then let's go create our own, you know, let's start carving out this path and, and really helping to bring others into the fold. So, you know, and that's, that's, I mean, there's a lot, you know, I mean, yeah. Renegade has even expanded. I mean, it's, it's not just women, you know, a lot of it's, it's all marginalized voices. Like we have to Beautiful. support one another. Beautiful. That's mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. But producing is so essential to making your own work. That's where oh, yeah. Begin right there because then often you know when you produce you direct or when you write you direct i know that well it's such a collaborative that's part of process, the process right is, i mean you can't do one without the other and mm -hmm. trying to find you know other people that that complement you creatively that you can collaborate with and and make these things happen because it, it's so hard to try to make a project happen on your own. So finding yeah. that good support system, that creative tribe that will, you know, help you bring a story to life. The um, passion is very important. Yes. You know, how we inspire each other to uh, and educate, to um, really find the fire in the belly. And there is a fire priestess do you know about the Virgin Vesta? No. Well, she is a goddess. And um, I mean, without her um, and, and that kind of energy, that flow or that um, part. Yeah. The part of that. You know, you're activating this part in yourself because we're, we're so many parts. We're made up of so many. But that part is so important because it helps us to stay activated in, in, in our own vision. That's a hard one for people. And yeah. I want to encourage everyone to find that, to find their own inner vision. It might be that you have to face your own inner monster with that. Yeah. That's hard. It's really a hard thing. I think we go up and down and in and out with that one. Um, but we can, if we use that, it'll regenerate, rate will regenerate mm -hmm. and will heal. And through that kind of mysterious healing process, um, some of the writing can come right from there, from that place, that inspirational writing can come right, right from that. I agree with you. And, you know, we've, we've talked about this before in other um, episodes, but specifically in horror, you know, it can be so cathartic. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, genres and kind of spaces where you can go to places that other genres won't go you know you can kind of push the envelope and really explore things that that are traumatic that are difficult and you know that are sometimes taboo to talk about but horror will go there and it will often <laughs> go there in a, in you know in a in a way to be an allegory to something else and beautiful you know, that's, I think when you can really share some messages and share some, because that, yeah. you know, it's, it's when you get into the subtext that, yeah. that you can really start to, to see those things. Um, mm. and I love it. I love that about this genre. Great, Vanessa. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I will totally geek out with stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's good. It's all good. Um, but for some fun stuff, uh, you know, obviously, you know, majority of the horror fans know you uh, from this film. But, you know, what what got you into this? You know, I mean, was. What happened before? Like, what was what were you like before Slumber Party Massacre? You know, was this <laughs> the trajectory that, that you I love it chose or, you know, yeah. let's talk a little bit about your journey. Yeah, well. The beauty of, of uh, you know, improvisation, comedy um, is where I come from. I come from some of that, that work, but mostly I fell in love as a little girl with this passion to perform. Yeah. And I would even run around with bro and sis in the house, putting costumes on and sharing and, la- you know, laughing and storytelling. And it was a gas. Yeah. So that was a sidebar because actually in school early, um, it was natural uh, to not natural without nerves. Okay. <laughs> Even today, I have nerves right now. <laughs> but now, that's great, channel. right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's you all need about that. Channeling. <laughs> it's all about the channeling. If yeah. you can. And, and then there's a juice, there's a flow that you can get into. But anyway, that is all began really early, you guys. I uh, so yeah. But it, when it came to slumber, I'd been like you know performing around town in theater productions and and auditioning, and there was a resume and a photo that was being passed around, and I had been working over at Zoetrope Studios, Francis Ford Coppola's law on that lot. Yes. Between Francis, one from the heart and just, you know, between a lot of, a lot of stage early on. So the, um, suddenly I got a call, you know, from, from the office over there, come on in. So I went in, had a meeting with Amy that went so well, you guys. And it was like a breath of fresh air because suddenly I'm meeting a female director. <laughs> it was really rare in those days, man. Yeah. <laughs> and it was really- Very cool. few and far between. <laughs> exactly, because mostly they, they were casting directors that I was working with that were female and male directors. Male yeah. Directors. But yeah, but so to work with uh, a beautiful- uh, female director and not knowing that she was a real feminist but guess what I mean who was willing to go all the way you know and 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 I think those powerhouses when you come in and you feel excited and confident to to go forward with nerves that you're going to channel but you're willing to risk and, and then you have that strong collaboration like you were saying Vanessa that takes place on the set and yeah. um, everybody was collectively like a driving force for that for making the work really happen so a uh, quick question was Rita on set was she no no but Rita's book uh we know the the beautiful Ruby Fruit Jungle was on set in one of the scene in the beginning scene I think or one of the in my bedroom so oh, you, you know, I'd have to go back and that, find that Easter egg. You know, so that that would talk about a conscious choice. Yeah. By Amy Holden Jones oh. to make sure to get that in there, because it's I really that. clear that Amy respected Rita quite a bit. Yeah. Um, even though there was a change, you know, changing of, of some of the guards because she was working with, you know, Roger. So mm-hmm. she, she was making that career take place with certain nips and tucks that needed to go in. Yeah. Yeah. I and I also that. feel I may have uh, contributed a little to the exploit. I mean, you're, you're, we're all, when we're actors, and especially in that time, even if you're, again, with going for career, so was Amy, so was I at that point. Or just to, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't as much career as it was a project to, to enjoy. And yeah. meet the marks, be, be love, loving and professional and collaborate with, with the beautiful strengths around me. How mm-hmm. luck, how blessed was that mm-hmm. to have them 
as part of that um, yeah beautiful right. collective strength you can really you can really pick up on that too when you're watching the film there's just this chemistry between everyone and it's like a powerful wonderful chemistry it really shines you can feel it as well as see it mm -hmm. thank you and and that is something that that we were all feeling on that set there were real relationships being made with yeah. each other have you had any um real life supernatural experiences do you believe in the supernatural? what a beautiful question that is 